Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. So this is not a live stream. I know that, um, well, I usually do a live stream, or at least I try to do, uh, on Saturday evenings after sunset. Um, and it may look like I'm going to try to premiere this one. So it's going to, for those of you that don't understand the difference, it'll appear to be live, but it's not. This is pre-recorded, And the reason is, is um, all the storms that we've been having, I believe... Um, satellite internet has been hit, um, possibly by lightning or hail. It's, it's damaged somehow. It's not working. It's not. The router works fine, um, but it's telling me that there's no satellite connected to it. And I've checked the connection. I've checked the wiring. Um, something's messed up. So I'll have to be working on that. So no, no live streams until that happens, till I can get that repaired, because we just don't have the internet bandwidth to do a live stream out here. So anyways, um, a lot of stuff going on. Um, tomorrow is our monthly meeting. So if you're able to make it out, please do so. Be a good one. We're putting on a, I'm not, uh, but we're having a cheese making class. So that's going to be really fun. Uh, the people that are doing it, um, I know them personally. They're very knowledgeable. They're, they're like, they're, they're in that master level homesteader. Uh, they can, they can do a whole lot and they have a, they have a, a lot of years experience doing it. So this would be a good one for you to come out and see. Um, a lot of things in the news. <clears throat> Let's get over with the, the World War III stuff, right? Um, as you all probably know, the head of um, Hezbollah was taken out by Israel in a ma massive uh, bombing there in Beirut, Lebanon. Took out that leader, took out some Iranian uh, military leaders. And then, apparently, uh, Hezbollah named another leader, and shortly thereafter, Israel took that person out. So now they're under the third leader in the last 24 hours. Um, this is, I think, pretty serious. <clears throat> Probably much more serious than them taking out Hamas's um, president or leader or whatever his title was. Because Hezbollah uh, in the region, well, number one, it's bigger. Uh, it's more... It has, even though it's still a terrorist organization considered that by many countries, it's also considered more legitimate. Um, you know, they're they're part of the, I don't want to get into all the details, but they're just more legitimate, okay? At least on the appearance. So it, it's a bigger deal. Um, of course, Iran, they're, they're, they're going crazy. They're making all these threats. They say that they are sending troops inside of, of Lebanon to back up the the Hezbollah there. Now, is that going to happen? Iran makes a lot of threats. They, they say a lot and they do very, very, very little. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, Israel is not allowing any planes to land in Beirut to resupply Hezbollah. They said that they will shoot them out of the sky. So there's that. Um, I did see that, I guess, last fall sometime, the Biden administration asked Israel to not take out this Hezbollah leader because they felt that it would lead to World War III or at least to a larger regional war in that area. And everything so far is looking like that that's happened. Now, Israel, you've got to admit, is is doing some a pretty amazing work on quickly going in and neutralizing leadership. And, and I mean, this whole plan from the beginning, it's interesting because... Uh, if you look at what went on in the Gaza Strip with Hamas, uh, honestly, it was not that impressive to me. Um, I was, I was expecting a whole lot more skill, and and everything, and it, and planning, and it just didn't. I mean, it, it just it's been drug out and drug out. But now, what's going on with Hezbollah is a whole different story. I mean, it's like something right out of a Hollywood movie. So, um, yeah, things are definitely heating up over there, and. Um, just a lot of stuff going on, uh, this, this, this pack for the future with the United Nations that's getting almost zero, um, news time is, is a big deal. Uh, and I, I've gone into that in other videos and, and most of you know what I'm talking about with that. Um, just, there's just a lot of stuff and, and it's, it's hard to kind of take it all in when it comes to the, to all of that space, that news and stuff. Uh, what I want to talk about mostly, is, is probably the more obvious, is the hurricane and the, the damage since then. 
Now, the days leading up before this happened, I was, I was telling people, this looks like it's going to be a, a big deal, much bigger than previous hurricanes. Um, had a lot of people in the chat and in the comments say that, ah, this is nothing. It's just another hurricane. We're used to this kind of stuff. And it's not because I have some kind of great knowledge. It's that I actually have some fairly good connections uh, with people that are in meteorology and had spoken with them. And they were they were saying that there's just there were certain little indicators. And I don't understand all of it behind the science, but there were certain indicators early on that this hurricane had the potential to do a, a significant amount of damage, especially if it followed the path that they thought it would, which is exactly where it went. And so now um, we're seeing massive, massive devastation, especially in uh, western North Carolina, uh, eastern Tennessee, uh, are probably, it looks to be that they are, they've received the, the brunt of it, the worst of it. There's still, I mean, there are certainly damages in South Carolina and Georgia and Florida, but those two areas, um, and it's, of course, it's all flooding. Uh, Asheville, North Carolina is just almost completely destroyed. Uh, they're cut off from the rest of the world. All the, all the roads leading in to that town, in and out of that town are shut down. Um, places over Newport, um, Irwin, Tennessee, just a lot of de destruction. I have family uh, that are that are living in both um, Western North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee. So I've been keeping in contact with them. Uh, they're both doing good. Uh, they've been without power uh, off and on, and cell phone has been difficult. Um, in fact, the the one person in Tennessee. Um, they said that most of the cell towers were down. The only way that we could communicate with them is if they were able to get to a Wi-Fi connection, like a DSL line or something. But, but all the the inner the the cellular towers were non-functioning. Um, it, this is a big deal, and there's a couple of things to point out. Number one, um, if there are, if if you feel led, I'm I'm not involved in any kind of uh, campaign to 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 bring in money for people there. But um, I know that some of you will feel led to do so and certainly find uh, a solid, legitimate one that you can be part of uh, a group or something that's directly helping in that area. But mostly keep them in your prayers. Um, it, it's, this is going to be a big one. This is going to be a lot of destruction. It's widespread. It's not like a tornado that takes out one town. There are multiple communities that are, are we're in the path of all this. And it's it's gonna it's gonna be bad for a while. Now, <clears throat> shifting gears slightly, but on the same subject. Um, for those of you, and I don't want to I don't want to touch a sore spot with for the people that are directly involved. So some of you that are directly in the midst of this destruction, this isn't necessarily for you, and this isn't to rub salt in any wounds. This is really as a learning experience for the rest of everyone. Um, looking at what's happened. Um, even though you may not know all the details, I think it's it's easy to see where people could have been better prepared, where where they messed up, where where they, you know, whether they should have evacuated or they should have had the the right stuff. And and each one of you, like I've said for the last week about this, should be watching this carefully so that you can learn from it, because. While you may not live, you, you may live in an area that a hurricane is not likely to happen or never going to happen, depending on where you live. But there's other things, you know, there's tornadoes, there's ice storms, there's just general flooding. Um, there there could be terrorist attacks, taking out the grid, taking out a dam, uh, d damaging water supply systems. There, there's all types of scenarios that could lead to similar, at least same level of destruction as what we're seeing in those areas. And I, I wonder how many people are truly prepared for that. You know, you can say all the time that, um, and I, cause I've heard people say this, you know, when you talk about communications, well, you know, if, you know, something happens, your cell phone's gonna die. It's, it's not gonna be functioning, right? Which is what's happening in many of these areas. And I hear a lot of people like, oh, well, so what? I'll just deal without my cell phone. And I think we, we, whoops. <laughs> there we go. 
Uh, I knew that was going to happen. I think we say that or people say that because, you know, they just think that, well, when, when the world ends and everything hits the fan, I'm just going to throw my technology out the window because most people are going to do the same because it's not going to work and it won't matter at that point. We'll just deal with it. But that's not necessarily what's going to happen. There's there's many, many more scenarios that could happen where technology still exists and, and most people are still using it, but you just may not be able to use it. You may not be able to use it because of a disaster in your area, or you may not be able to use it because you choose not to because it's become so intrusive in our lives, even way more so than it is now. And I don't think most people are prepared for that, that moment to where they don't have technology. They don't have cell phones, but yet everyone else does. And it's different if no one has them versus you don't have them and everyone else does. And and so, you know, trying to communicate, you know, talking to a fam one of these family members this morning and they were asking, you know, what could I do to be able to communicate with you guys? <laughs> There's not a whole lot, you know, that, that would communicate that distance. I mean, there's definitely ham radios, but they're not, exp not, not cheap necessarily th that can cover that distance. You know, we're talking several hundred miles, you know, eight, 800 plus miles. Uh, some ham radios can do it. You have to have the, the right equipment. You have to have the licensing because even though it's during a da disaster, it's still con not considered a life-threatening situation. So it means you still need to have a license. Um, it's some skill, all this. It, it's possible. It's possible to do, but it's not easy. There's not an easy solution. That's why, that's why before the advent of, of, of phones, people didn't communicate that lived far away other than through mail, which took days and weeks to happen. So that this, this idea of instant communication, it, it doesn't happen that often. It's, it's not that easy. And so you take cell phones out of the equation and it's hard to do. I mean, there's still landlines in some places, not everywhere. We, we can't even get a landline here if we wanted one. Uh, but then those are still not 100%. They, they can still, you know, these, this flooding over there, the landlines may not work. I don't know. The point is, is that we can talk all the time about how we're really prepared, but we don't know it until we actually experience um, the, the real deal. We experience something, whether it's World War III or just, you know, a massive hurricane that dumps lots of water and shuts communities down and blows, you know, washes roads away and, and knocks out power and, and cell phones. You know, how, how really prepared are people? Um, and by watching this kind of stuff and seeing it happen, um, try to put yourself in that situation. Try to put yourself in, okay, what would I do if that happened? What would I do if, you know, a dam broke or a levee broke or there was just so much water that it washed my home away? You know, I mean, that, there's there's certainly videos of that. Now, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, the people that are experiencing that now, they might be able to go to a shelter and get help. Um, but what if those shelters don't exist? What if it's because of a bunch of other bad things that are going on that prevents those shelters from really existing? We have to be prepared for that. Uh, watching what's happened because of this hurricane is, yeah, it's not much different than, than other to types of disasters, tornadoes and ice storms and other hurricanes and stuff. But still, this is a very serious event. And a lot of people have been, well, there's people that's perished, their lives have lost their lives, uh, disrupted injuries. Uh, they've lost homes, a, a lot of a lot of loss because of this. And while you can't stop it from happening, there are things that you can do in your life to better ride out that storm. And, and this should become more and more apparent to folks, to you folks, because the, the real storms, not just the hurricanes and the tornadoes, but the real storms that completely change the, the human history, the path of human history, which is exactly what's happening right now. This Agenda 2030, this you know, Great Reset Plan, um, all of this stuff that's going on. It, it's, it's more than just a tornado or hurricane, hurricane because it's not just a, a temporary regional disaster. This is, this is global, and they're wanting to change things permanently, the, the entire path of our existence. 
and um, it, it's 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 huge. It's big, huge, and we have to be ready for that. It's it's not just a a little hiccup, a little speed bump. Uh, it's serious. I saw someone post today on online. He said, "You need to have everybody before the election needs to have six months of food, six months of food put away, six months worth of water." six months worth of medical supplies put away because between the election and, and the aftermath before immediately before and, and then after the election is going to be chaotic. Now that was what this guy was posting. I agree with that. Um, <clears throat> I agree that the, the, the odds of things being really bad just before the election and for a period after the election, I'd say are pretty high and you better be ready for that. Um, six months really is, is a very minimum. I mean, it's, it could go longer than that because depending on the path, depending on how things go, we could go from just the chaos of the election to the immediate chaos, you know, rolling right into the immediate chaos of the, the actual reset of the, the global domination. And that is going to be a lot longer than six months, folks. Um, the, the, this stuff with this hurricane, we should be paying attention to this and reevaluating ourselves. You know, for for instance, one of the family members that I talked to, you know, they had a they had a go bag, bug out bag. They had stuff, they were ready to go, but they were trying to figure out when to go. Is it worth it, you know? Where to go is the thing because where they were at uh the flood water started moving in so that there was there wasn't really a lot of places to go. Even if they had a designated place. Uh, roads were being cut off all around them, and so it was, it was getting to a point that there wasn't really any place they could go because they couldn't get out. And these are scenarios that could very easily happen to the rest of us, and we have to be ready for that. And, and watching what's going on in the Middle East, watching what's going on in Russia, and then watching what's going on here in the United States, whether it be the illegals or the increase in violence, or, or natural disasters like this hurricane. We should be paying attention to that and, and using all of that to try to, When I talk about a plan, a plan, a plan, a plan, this is what I'm talking about. Watching these events happen and then figuring out, at least if nothing else in your head, I mean, if you can put it down on paper, that's great. But if nothing else in your head of how can I take these these instances and experiences and things, these events, and use them to come up with an idea of how for, how for us to do. You know, for instance, you know, if 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 a dam breaks and, and you can't get out because there's water flooding all around you, what are you going to do? You know, your plan, your backup plan may be to evacuate, to bug out. But what happens when you absolutely can't bug out? What's your plan then? Do you have a, a way to get to higher ground on foot? Um, what happens when the electricity goes out and, and you're just not ready for it? Do you have a plan in place of when that power goes out to have immediate steps afterwards to start preparing, start, you know, shutting things down, you know, whatever it is. Do you have a plan for when that electricity shuts off or when you think it's going to shut off? Uh, do you keep things charged up? Do you keep things topped off? Uh, I've talked about that recently that, in my opinion, from here on out, you should be doing that. At least from here to the end of the year, you should be keeping things charged and topped off all the time. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when the cell phones don't work? Phones, cell phones and, and landlines don't work. How are you going to communicate when you know you've got family out there that's worried to death about you? Is there a way that you can reach them or that they can get a hold of you? Do you have a plan for that? Do you have a plan to get everyone together to... To get through the chaos when the, the when the streets start rioting and when the, the people turn into animals, basically. Do you have a plan for that to protect yourself and your family? These are things that you should be thinking of. And while certainly there are lots of events going on in the world right now that indicate, once again, <laughs> that indicate um, that that the world is falling apart. Um <clears throat> We have to realize that what what eventually it boils down to is what you're going to do, how you are ready for it. Are, are you prepared to, to, to handle whatever it is, the chaos, whether it's natural, uh, terroristic, wars, famines, economic, 
Are you ready for that? And, and, and really, that's something that we have to be focused on, is getting ourselves ready and watching these events and then trying to kind of role play it out in your heads. What would I do if those things happened to me? What would I do if they happened in my area? If I had to live through that, how would I prepare myself? What would I do differently? And what do I need? And then that's really where you should start formulating your plan. Because folks, it's coming. I mean, it, it's it's coming. If, if you can't see, watch all these world events and not realize it, then I don't know what to tell you. You better be getting ready and getting your houses in order and preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.